All right. Hello. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Um, it seems like we are now live. Welcome to today's um, webinar, today's special webinar. We're talking about why most businesses fail on Facebook. And we're talking about this so that you can succeed, whether you are a small business owner or maybe you're a um, service provider, like a or freelancer who wants to offer um, Facebook services, Facebook ad services, Facebook chat services, social media management or marketing to small business owners. Um, this webinar is for you if, you if you're in one of those groups. So let me know. Let me know if you're watching. Uh, let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me. Say hello. I'm trying out a new app right now, so um, I'm not sure if this is working 100%. Um, let me know. Let me know if you can hear me. And if you can see me, uh, I'm just trying to get things up and running right now. Okay, okay, yes. Um, testing out some um, some multi-stream software over here. So yeah, let me know how you're doing. Okay, I can see some comments. Hello, good evening, Erica. Uh, let me know your, where you're watching from as well. I'm over here in Cebu, streaming from Cebu. Um, we're currently under... Um, we're, we're we're under quarantine here. We're we're not under a lockdown or anything. Cebu in the Philippines here, um, and and yeah, things are doing pretty well. Hello, Mary Claire. Good evening. Um, stay stay at uh, happy stay at home from Jensen. Hello, Mary Lou. Hello, Vitz. I'm glad you guys could join us tonight. Okay. Hello. 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 I'm Lauren Zana from Cebu as well. Nice. We're getting. Um, some Cebu people here. So yes, this is our topic for tonight. Why most businesses fail on Facebook. So um, usually we talk about um, newbie topics, but today it's going to be a more um, a more complex topic. Why most businesses fail on Facebook. So that you know, if you are a service provider, um, hopefully you know you can you can do better, and then you won't fail <laughs> on Facebook. I can see here you nice AT um, watching from QC at home. Yes, yeah, stay at home, guys. Stay at home. Wash your hands. I can see your handsome face and hear clearly you're showing. Oh, thank you, Estefania. All right, all right. I'm gonna give um, people a couple of minutes to join in. I was having. Um, I was supposed to send an email to a number of people who confirmed, but um, there was there's something wrong with the with the email functionality um, in the app I'm using. But you know, at least we're here. We're here right now. And um, we're doing. I'm, I'm trying to also stream on on um, YouTube, but I'm not sure if that's going well. Um, give me a moment here, guys. I'm just gonna check and see if we are in the group as well. Okay. Hello. Uh, good evening. Hello, Bambi, Erica, um, my C from Santa Tomas. Nice, Lizelle. Hello, Lizelle. Hello. Ponchano, Arnulfo, hello. Um, sir, is there online job that is part time only? Uh, yes, that's your question. Yes, there is. There are online jobs that are only part time. Um, okay, I'm just managing multiple windows here. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay, okay, it seems like we are good to go. Let me just close these other windows, make sure. And. All right, um, we're gonna go ahead and get started soon. Hello, hey guys, hey guys. Okay, there we go, there we go. Um, yes, so this is our topic for tonight. It's a, it's a more, kind of more niche topic than what we usually talk about. But yeah, we're talking about why most businesses fail on Facebook. Who of you here is kind of in this area? Are you in social media? Do you do any social media marketing, any social media management? Uh, do you do Facebook ads? Uh, do you work with clients who are on Facebook and, and you want them to succeed? Let me know. Is, it, is, that, is that someone um, that you are? Then let me know in the comments. Okay, okay. So now, First of all, you know, before we jump into the jump into this topic tonight, um, hello, Ian from Dipolog. Hello, uh, Chil from Cebu as well. Um, uh, Marites, if you can if you can check, um, let me just say, um, check 
freevacourse.com. You know, check our freevacourse.com. Check that over there. Okay, okay. Let me just see here. All right. So um, now we dive into this topic. You know, we see on, on on Facebook especially. Maybe not right now, but on Facebook especially, we see a lot of people kind of. We see a lot of ads, right? A lot of us are on Facebook. Um, we see a lot of ads. We see a lot of people talking about their products, advertising their product, and so on, right? Uh, for example, we see things like this. You know, we see like. Um, vegan all natural ingredients super fat burner energy boost um, and then there are things like instead of grabbing toilet paper people should be stocking on metal detoxifiers to stop coronavirus so we see these things in our facebook feeds right we see this these feed these things in our facebook feeds um sometimes right and and what do you think of them what do you think of these kinds of posts what do you think of these kinds of posts when it comes to seeing these on your Facebook news feed, you know, seeing um, people selling their products, um, trying to say, you know, you can, if you take this, this will help prevent um, things like coronavirus or even not during the, you know, months ago before we even heard of coronavirus, we still, we've still seen um, posts like this, right? We've still seen posts like this. So um, what, what, what do you think of this? At AT, this topic is not the usual for newbies mainly. Uh, but I'm sure there's a lot to learn from this. Okay, okay, good to hear. Yolanda, you're here. Good, good to see that you're here. And for the, those of you watching, there is going to be a replay as well. So we see these kinds of things, right? We see these kinds of things on Facebook. And well, for me personally, like it, it kind of turns me off towards towards the product or service a lot of the times, right? It kind of turns me off and makes me feel like, you know, if you're trying to push that. If you're saying these kinds of things, um, well, well, I'm trying to just, you know, um, look at baby pictures and travel photos. It can ter of turns me off towards the product and sometimes towards the person themselves as well, right? It, yeah, I think it's annoying. That's what um, Amy is saying, right? I think, I think it's annoying. I, I also find it annoying a lot of the times as well, right? Um, hello, Shirley. Nice to see you're here with us also. Okay, um, so... If you have any expectations for this webinar, let me know. What are your expectations for this webinar? Once again, this webinar is titled Why Most Businesses Fail on Facebook. So what are your expectations? What what do you want to learn from this webinar so I can see if it's something that we can address in tonight's session? All right. Um, and just to remind everybody, just to remind everybody, um, I have the Facebook ads bots uh facebook ads and bots master class which comes with um four live sessions and three months of ad consultations it's a twenty thousand peso one-time fee or seven thousand five hundred divided into three months so this is um a live training unlike the recorded trainings i usually have this is a live training and it comes with um not only trainings on facebook ads not only trainings on Facebook bots, but it comes with live consultations as well, um, where the students or you will be able to ask me, um, you know, tips on your specific ads, on specific strategies for yourselves or for your clients. And it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee as well. So um, this, just letting you know that we have this, if you're enrolled in the VA bootcamp, you do get a discount. Um, so that's it's a plus if you're in the VA bootcamp, you get a discount on this master class. Okay, um, now talking about what we're covering tonight, we have a number of things we're talking about. First of all, we're going to talk about how traditional advertising works. Okay, we're covering that. We're going to talk about why traditional advertising doesn't work on the internet so much. Okay, how internet marketing works, traditional versus internet marketing. We're going to cover Google ads, YouTube ads, and Facebook ads as well. Okay, so um, a lot of things to cover tonight. Uh, we only have one hour, but we do have a lot of things that we're going to go over um, in this session tonight. But wait a minute, let me just um, refresh my windows here. Okay, it's a bit, it's a bit messy um, from what I'm seeing, but okay. Oh. Give me one moment. I'm just trying to rearrange my window so I can see your comments more easily. All right. 
Okay. Um, there we go. All right, how to make Facebook ads more effective. Okay, yes, we're, we're definitely talking about that tonight. It's definitely a big topic for tonight's session. Right? That's one of the most important things that you wanna know, right, uh, right Krista? So what, what are your other expectations? If you have any other expectations, let me know. Okay, so now, once again, why do most businesses fail on Facebook? Why do most businesses fail on Facebook? If you have any ideas, um, type them in the comments. Let's just talk about this like in a, a kind of workshop setting. So to kind of understand that though, to kind of understand that, let's take a look at how traditional advertising works. Okay, let's take a look at how traditional advertising works. So when we say the word advertising, you know, what, what comes to mind? What do you think about when somebody says advertising, ads, things like that? What, what's the first picture that comes into your head? Well, for a lot of us, and for most of us, for most of us, when we think of advertising, the first thing that comes into our head is like billboards, right? If you're, if you're on the street, um, if you're in traffic and you see a billboard, you know, that's what we think of when we think of advertising, right? Or sometimes we think of TV, television ads, right? Television ads are also a form of advertising. Another is radio ads. We think of radio ads and also things like magazine ads. So this is tradition. These are like the traditional advertising channels and what they're doing with these in these different channels, whether it's billboard, whether it's video, whether it's radio, whether it's magazine, what they're doing is they're shouting their product at us from their platforms, right? They're shouting their product at us from their platforms. Um, and the most important thing for these companies is that we constantly think of them, that we that that they're on the top of our minds when we go shopping for a product or a service. For example, we hear we hear the um, the jingles uh, for let's say Jollibee, um, eight eight seven eight seven thousand Jollibee delivery, right? Um, so we hear those jingles. We hear um, we remember the ads. So. Yes, they are, they're always promoting something, right? They're always asking you to buy something. Right? Um, they're, they, and they want to stay on top of your mind. That's why they have um, a lot, they, they keep on repeating the same ads over and over again, the same jingles, the same taglines, so that you don't forget them, so that you don't forget them. And if we look at the, at the principles of traditional advertising, traditional advertising has a number of principles. First of all is visual consistency, meaning the, when you see an ad, let's say for Coca-Cola, it always has the same kinds of colors, the same feel visually. Um, there's a duration for campaigns. Usually there's like a, um, a one month campaign, they promote some, or a three month campaign, they promote something. Um, they're repeated taglines and the reason why they have repeated taglines is they want to they want to stick in your head okay. uh, the taglines are something that will repeat over and over in your head okay. next is consistent positioning consistent positioning um, so the the kind of language that they use the positioning that they use has to be consistent throughout the different ads and the different channels that they're in next is simplicity um, they want to keep it simple on traditional advertising, you know, you're you're running a TV ad, you're running a a magazine ad, a radio ad. You want to keep or, or or billboard. You you don't want to have too much information there, right? You don't want to overwhelm the, um, the the audience with too much information. You want to keep things simple. They have a key selling point that's simple once again, and have an effective flow, especially in TV and radio. There should be an effective flow um, throughout the whole advertisement. So these are the these are the principles of traditional advertising. And one really good example, one really good example of traditional advertising is Coca-Cola. Okay. So we see that, you know, even in different seasons um, and their different advertising channels, it's a consistent message. They use consistent colors. The red and white is always there, like open a Coke open happiness even if it's not even if you don't always see that tagline you have that positioning in their different advertisements so their their positioning is always about promoting happiness so 
it's something that that so when we think of happiness they want us to connect that with coca-cola and when we go to a store when we go to like 7-eleven uh, when we go to the fast foods they want us to think of coca-cola it's such a strong brand and they want want to maintain that strength which is why they even though we already know about them they keep on advertising hello uh, my hello Xander oh um, by the way uh, just to just to <laughs> galing ng coke kahit sa gubat meron oh galing ng coke talaga um, oh by the way guys before I, uh, I before I forget I'm gonna be giving away I'm gonna be giving away um, the PDF slides to this webinar okay the PDF slides to this webinar and um, I'm also I'll also be hosting um, free con 15 minute free consultations okay this is one-on-one -on -one free consultations with me personally um, so you can get that um, the first thing you have to do is share this webinar so hit that share button and let me know that you shared it in the comments down below once again I'm giving away uh, the PDF slides the slides for this and um, we're doing I'm doing a 15 minute consultation so um, that's for free once again instead of charging um, that's that's charging a huge amount of money I'm um, doing 15 minute free consultations with regards to this topic so all the first thing they have to do is share this webinar hit that share button let me and um, comment that you share this in the comments so let me know um, looking at the comments here Tessa hello good evening Lenny good evening LP even the colors yes even the colors are very consistent in all their ads about all their ads whether it's magazine whether it's TV you'll see that they use consistent colors okay consistent colors it's always red and white it's always these bright um, very rare there there are some times where they use a dark theme but most of the time it's always a bright theme and it always promotes happiness so coke does a very good job of this of you of utilizing and following the traditional mar advertising principles right they they always follow the traditional advertising principles well, well most of the time and they do it really well okay so this is traditional advertising though right this is traditional advertising and and like we mentioned earlier there's a difference between traditional advertising and internet advertising right so there's traditional advertising and then there is internet advertising internet advertising so um, first things first you know when we think about internet advertising you know we we certain terms come to mind right when we think of um, internet advertising maybe you think of um, the spam that comes up you know you get spam emails you get pop-ups um, a lot of people consider those advertising maybe um, you see like when you go to Rappler or even ABS CBN or JMA they have advertisements it, to be specific display advertisements um, in in the different news websites or different blogs right so we think you know when we think of internet advertising these things come to mind and and more recently well in the recent years Facebook advertising as well so this is our main focus so we'll go over um, these the kinds of advertising here one by one one at a time because we're more familiar with traditional advertising we're used to it we, we've seen it for a long time right but internet advertising is still something that's a lot newer than traditional advertising so let's go over it let's go over the different channels one by one okay um, oops. Let, me just, let me just here let's go over these channels one by one. Oh, um, but first of all it's important for us to identify the distinction between content and ads okay between content and ads, between non ad content and yes ads are still content but there's usually a distinction between content and ads okay so content usually is stuff that you don't pay for okay stuff that you don't pay for you know you you create content but you don't pay for it okay that's that's content just to clarify and ads are stuff that you do pay for so just keeping that simple okay just keeping that simple now it's important for us to know Okay, it's it's probably like you're thinking okay it's very obvious what the difference is but it's important for us to maintain that distinction okay JD don't worry there is a replay okay don't worry, there, there will be a replay at the end 
Okay, so there are different kinds of advertising. I'm not gonna talk about content so much, okay? There's blog content, there's social media content. There are different kinds of content, okay? Different kinds of content, but we're focusing more on advertising today. Okay, so um, first of all is search ads. Okay, So w how search ads work is when you type something, uh, in this scenario, the person type dog walker, and then the first, on the very top, we see that there's a Google ad there, um, dog walking service. So it's it's a Google ad right there. So that's how Google ads, Google search ads come up. Okay, so there's search ads. Oh, Bing also has search ads, um, and it works the same way. When you type something in the search bar, um, you're in the results, mixed in the results, usually at the very top, and sometimes at the bottom, depending on the device we're using, the search terms we're using, you're going to see ads there okay next up we have what we call display ads okay and display ads are what we see in the newspapers in the blog posts in the middle over here we have a display ad so it's kind of like a banner okay sometimes it's a rectangle sometimes it's a square okay so we have those different kinds of display ads next up we have in video ads okay and these are usually either in between videos um, usually for shorter videos, these are in between videos, you have ads that come up. And in the middle of videos, you have ads that come up. And most of these ads are videos as well. Right? They're short videos. Like in YouTube, we're, we're familiar with ads that you can't skip. Even on Facebook, they're ads that you can't skip. Um, sometimes you can skip them depending on the length. Sometimes you can't skip them. Right? Or there's like a five second timer before you can skip an ad. So these are... Well, there, there are more specific categories here, but we're going to call them in video ads. And on YouTube as well, at the side, you'll also see a display ad here on the right side together with the in video ad. Okay. Um, now, when it comes to social media, we have the news feed ads, the sponsored posts, the news feed ads. You'll see those on social media feeds. Most of us use Facebook. We see them on Facebook. We, we see them on Instagram. Sometimes we also see them on Twitter if you use Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, these are news feed ads. And our last category for tonight is messenger ads. So there can be ads on Messenger as well, on Facebook Messenger, on WhatsApp also, they're, they're starting to um, introduce ads into WhatsApp. So companies can send messages and they can display ads inside of the Messenger platform. Okay, so um, there are so many different platforms and so many ways to approach these different platforms when it comes to internet marketing. But overall, what we want to do is we want to have the Yes, even in online games, that's right, Xander. Even in online games, we see um, the in very similar to the in video ads now. That after you after you finish, after you die in a game, um, you see an ad, or in some of the apps on your phone, you see these ads as well. Okay, so we won't talk about these in detail, right? But I just wanted to give you an overview of the different kinds of ads because that's what we're really talking about tonight. And there are there are there are um, different kinds of categories but we're focusing on these main ones okay so i want to talk to you about traditional versus internet advertising and the difference between these okay the the, the main differences okay there there are a lot of differences yes i know there are a lot of differences but i want to identify a few differences that are that are relevant for our discussion and and they're that are relevant to the topic of why most businesses fail on social media and fail on platforms like Facebook. Okay, so let's take a look at um, when it comes to reach, the mindset, okay, the mindset, the thinking when it comes to reach for traditional and internet um, focused advertising. When it comes to reach for traditional advertising, okay, the thinking here, the mindset here is that the more people you reach, the better. Right, the more people you reach, the better. When we have TV ads, the the goal is to be in the time slots that reach more people, where more people are home. Same in newspaper, you want to have the Sunday newspaper. You want to be on on the the pages where a lot of people go to, because the 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 more most common approach is the more people you reach, the better. But in internet advertising, it's almost the opposite, where the less people you reach is better. 
okay? The less people you reach, the better. And, and I'm going to explain that here, okay? It's not really the less people that you reach, but the more specific people, the better. The more specific people, the better. And this is a very, very big distinction. This is a very, very big difference when it comes to um, traditional versus internet marketing. Okay. Um, with internet marketing, one thing that you can do is you can target specific people. You can target um, people who are aged 28 years old, 28 year old males who like Mobile Legends. You can go very sp and and who have um, who have iPhones, right? So you only want to target these people. That's that's that that's something that can be done with internet advertising and it's not something that can be done with traditional with traditional your goal is to reach as many people as possible because the specific people that you're targeting your specific target market if they're part of that big group you know you're trying to get lucky at some of that that, that big group that you're targeting are the people who are um, looking to buy your product right um, but in internet marketing there is a when you have a target market like Vitz is saying when you have a target market when you have a specific target market you can target them more specifically so you don't want to show your ad to people who are not in your target market because you're going to be paying for every person you show it to you only show it to people who have the better chance of purchasing your product okay? because once again you're paying for every person you're showing it to so if you pay let's say one peso or one cent for every person you're showing it to, you want to show it to the people who are more likely to buy, right? So that's the, that's the reach thinking here in traditional versus internet marketing. Now, when it comes to hard pitches, when it comes to the hard pitch, now in traditional marketing, um, there's, there's pressure, you know, the, the, there's a, a lot of the ads pressure people into buying, right? Well, in, in this example, we have TV ads where they pressure people into buying, you know, buy this now, there's a sale. We always see those um, SM three-day sale, right? We, SM three-day sale is always in the newspaper. But in the internet, it's a bit different. In internet advertising, especially when it comes to small businesses, you have to build trust because users are more hesitant. When we see a sale, like, a lot of the times now when you see a sale on the internet, you're thinking maybe it's not really a sale, right? Um, internet users are more hesitant to buy rather than compared to traditional advertising. So you have to build trust first compared to traditional advertising where you can just pressure people into buying. The internet, you have more choices, you have more information. There are a lot of scams online, right? So there is that hesitation. And you have to build that trust first or it's best that you build that trust first some companies they, they they're able to work without building that trust but it's a lot better and you're, you'll be able to sell a lot more if you can build trust first good evening um, good evening guys thank you for joining for those who, who are late here okay now when it comes to the image that you show and if you have any questions, any comments, let me know in the comments section, okay, so we can address them, okay. Um, when it comes to the image that, images that are shown to prospective buyers, okay. So in traditional advertising, um, it's more refined, okay, more refined. It's formal looking photos, right. That's what traditional advertising is very, there's that formal feel, you know, or not, even if it's not a formal feel, the, the video production, the image production, it's very refined, right? It's very refined. It's very, um, it's, it's perfect a lot of the times, but when it comes to internet advertising, it's very, it's, it's surprising. I've, I've done a lot of tests on this. Surprisingly, in a lot of the tests I've done more natural and often less refined images and video productions are what get more results okay? because it feels more real more natural and when you're scrolling down like in your news feed on your phone um, or on the computer you know you usually you see natural images right natural images natural videos not something that's refined not something that's perfect right? and what we're trying to do now, what you're trying to do is you're kind of trying to fit in and cap and still capture attention. You're trying to fit in and, while being able to capture attention instead of 
standing out so much that it feels off, that it feels very corporate, right? So this is when when we're when we're talking about images, um, the traditional versus the internet advertising refined versus more natural looking images there's that distinction right there okay next is the aura the feel okay the feel when it comes to um traditional versus internet advertising in traditional advertising a lot of the times you, you the, the companies are respectable okay they're respectable they're they're you want they're held in high esteem right um but and, but the issue there is that there's often a disconnect. Okay. There's often a disconnect because they're they're so high up there. They're very respectable. They're very high esteemed. They want to create that. They want to create that with traditional advertising. But with internet advertising, it's more of and being the, the aura that works more is when you're more available to the audience. When you feel when the audience can feel more comfortable with you, more connected with you compared to traditional advertising where um, you hold the company in high esteem or they're trying to gain that respect. They're trying to gain that esteem and credibility where the side effect is there's often a disconnect between the user and the company. Okay. Um, next up, we have the attention factor. Okay. The attention factor. Now, in in traditional advertising, especially in TV ads and radio ads, people are forced to listen, to to see or to hear the ad. Okay, they're they're forced. They they don't have an, an, any other choice. They're going to hear it. They're going to see it because it's part of their programming. Right? It's part of the programming. But when it comes to internet advertising, okay, it's very critical because a lot of the times, especially when we talk about news feed ads, you have sometimes less than a second or around 1.2 seconds to grab their attention. They're scrolling through their Facebook feed and you want to be able to grab their attention like that, right? Immediately. So where if you use a traditional advertising approach, what happens is that, you know, you're trying to, to do a build up with your ad. You're, you're, you're trying to, to build a story. Um, but in, 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 in the age of internet advertising, people are very impatient. People are very impatient. In even in YouTube ads, um, you have five seconds, which is not a lot of time. So you have to build that, that capture their attention, build that interest within the first five seconds. If you're talking about um, in in video ads uh, or in stream ads, and for things like news feed ads, usually you have one second for them to stop and read your ad. So it's a, it's a very different approach, a very different mindset between these two. Okay, now when it comes to tracking, when it comes to tracking, and we're, we're talking about tracking the results of ad campaigns. When it comes to tracking the results of ad campaigns, when it comes to traditional advertising, what a lot of companies do is that they throw everything on a wall. Okay, they throw everything. What we mean by that is they, they try everything out. You know, they try TV campaigns, TV um, infomercials, uh, magazine campaigns, newspaper, radio, and the thing is, it's hard to see what sticks. It's hard to identify what works. Okay, let's say you run you run all these different. You know, you run a lot of different TV campaigns, um, a lot of radio campaigns, and newspaper campaigns. And then the sales go up, but it's hard to identify which TV ad worked the best, which magazine, which newspaper, which radio ad worked the best. It's hard to track that because they're all going out at the same time. And you, you're not sure which one is really sticking. You're not sure which one is really working. But when it comes to internet ads, the great thing here about internet ads is that when you run them, you can see the results. You can see which exact channels which exact ads which exact images which exact texts bring in which sales you can get very specific and see okay this specific ad is bringing in 90 percent of the sales and the rest are only bringing in 10 percent whereas with traditional it's something that you can't really do it's something that's very difficult to do in traditional advertising 
Okay, um, now I want to ask you a question here. Oh, well, um, we have the answer. I want to ask you a question. Does this mean we've gone over the differences here? Okay, we've gone over the differences with tracking, with the attention factor, with aura, with images, with a hard pitch, and with reach, right? Going over these different um, factors or these different differences. The audio is the audio gone? Hello, hello. Um, is it just. Let me see here. It says there's no audio, but uh, do other people have audio? Or is it just Jay who doesn't have audio? Because uh, no one else seems to be complaining here, but it seems to be okay. Um, let me know if you can hear me. Um, does anyone else have audio issues? Okay, now. I want to ask you this question here. Does this mean that traditional advertising doesn't work in today's age? Okay, uh, as Brian says, yes, very clear. So um, audio is good. So it's only Jay who's having that issue. Okay. So does this mean that traditional advertising doesn't work? Let me know. What are your thoughts on this? We've gone over the differences here. Does it mean that traditional advertising doesn't work anymore? What are your thoughts? Okay, audio is good, audio is good. Yeah, going over this, does, do you think that traditional advertising is obsolete? That it no longer works in today's day and age? It's okay, sir. See you. Okay, I'm going <laughs> So what are, do you think that traditional advertising, so my question for you is do you think that traditional advertising is obsolete in today's day and age or not? It still works to some extent, but not as uh, here. Um, Vitz is saying, I think still working, but in book, still working. Um, Mel is saying it still works to some extent, but not as effective as internet advertising. For me, traditional advertising still works, still works for some business. So, so the consensus is yet yeah, still, it still works, right? It still works nowadays. And going forward here, sorry, skipping this. So my question here, does this mean that traditional advertising doesn't work in the internet age? So no, it doesn't mean that traditional advertising doesn't work. And that will answer your question later. Okay. Um, there are still a lot of cases when traditional advertising principles still work in the internet age. Okay, they still work in the internet age, but the what you have to do is combine the principles. Combine the principles we talked about. We talked about the principles of traditional advertising and the differences between traditional and internet advertising. So what you have to do if you're a marketer, if you're an advertiser, is be able to combine the two together. Combine the two together. Right? Combine the principles that you learn in traditional because they can still work, but you have to adjust your approach. It's a combination of both. Very good, Hasmin. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll take note of Bambi's question here. I'll just save this. Let me just copy and paste this for I'll, I'll answer it um, at the end. Okay. Right. You have to combine the approach now there in fact there are a lot of channels right now where you focus so solely on the principles of traditional advertising for example on some of the in-stream ads you know we have only five seconds but you still want to keep a refined image you still want to have the consistent taglines the consistency things that you can remember you still want to have the consistent imaging 
um, for display ads as well. You want to have a refined image. So some of these, th there are those crossovers where it's kind of like these ads here, uh, as you can see on the right side, they're kind of like magazine ads because they're still in, like this is the Food Network. Um, they're still in the blogs, they're still in the networks. They, they still serve the same purpose. And also podcast ads. So we still have a version of TV ads, right? Um, especially the, the, but we keep it a lot shorter, you know, a lot shorter, but we still have a, a version of TV ads. We still have a version of magazine ads and billboard ads over here in the display ads. And we still have a version of radio ads in the modern kind of radio, which is, which is podcasting. So these still, these same principles can still hold, but once again, it's a combination of both the principles in traditional and internet advertising, especially when we talk about the more common types of internet advertising, which is search ads and um, the things like Facebook ads in the newsfeed. Right? Um, a, a, I'm not sure about the stats figured, but I think in the Philippines, traditional advertising still has its place. But that gradually the shift or that there may have actually been shifted already towards internet advertising as more and more Pinoy's get web access, access to the web often longer, despite the slow connection. Yes, and that's true. In the in the past few even in the past three years, there is a huge shift in the thinking. There's a huge shift not only in the Philippines, but all over the world when it comes to traditional advertising and to internet advertising. Some countries have been ahead. The first world countries have been ahead in that shift. Um, but we're experiencing that shift right now. We're experiencing that shift right now. And if we think about traditional advertising, the big problem, okay, the big problem with for small businesses in, in traditional advertising is small businesses can't afford. Right? Small businesses can't afford TV ads or, or newspaper ads or radio ads but they can afford the internet ads. They can afford internet ads the way that they're structured. It's a very different way that they're structured. Okay, so um, it may be still work nowadays, but it needs to be more creative to attract more clients. Okay, okay. Interesting take there. Now, in the online age, and especially when we're talking about small businesses, right? not established brands, not big businesses, but small businesses, and even some big businesses which have to establish their brand. When we talk about Coca-Cola, we know Coca-Cola, we know McDonald's and Starbucks and all these big names. But when we're talking about new brands that come up, there's always a hesitation, right? There's always a hesitation whether we're gonna buy from this brand. Because in the online age, before people will buy from you okay before people will buy from you they want to be able to first they want to first know you okay know you through your content okay they want to be able to like you first and most importantly to trust you to trust your products to trust who you are as a business not not as an individual but as a business and the, the products and services that you offer so in this age Knowing, liking, and trusting. You'll hear those a lot if you, if you um, attend different, different workshops when it comes to online marketing. But these are very important factors because there's a lot of hesitation right now when it comes to internet marketing um, compared to traditional marketing. But if, if, a, if a brand is able to build the knowing, the liking, and the trust factors with their audience, then that brand is gold meaning that brand can really make a lot of money and can really sell a lot. But they have to build the know, like, and trust factors. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, like I mentioned earlier, in the traditional age, small businesses couldn't afford advertising, right? They couldn't afford advertising. The, the, the new businesses that pop up, the ones that, that are in things like the Tianguez, um, the small markets, they can't afford to run TV ads. They can't afford to run newspaper ads. But in the internet age, this is, this is what's changing. This is what's changing now. And this is why we see so, so many small businesses 
and internet-based businesses pop up. Because in this age, in today's day and age, a small business can compete with big brands, even with a small budget. They can compete with big brands. Even if you have a very small budget, if you're able to run your campaigns, your ads effectively, you can compete with bigger brands. Or, or if, you're, if you're serving a company, the company you're serving can compete with bigger brands, even on a smaller budget. It, online advertising, it, it gives that opportunity to small businesses. But the problem is that you know, small businesses, they see this, they see the opportunity. Right? They, see, they know that the opportunity is there but they're not able to take advantage of the chance. I mean, they waste the chance. A lot of them, they put money into advertising. Right? A lot of them put money into advertising, but it doesn't work for them. They waste their chance. And the, the reason why this is so, okay? The reason why this is so is that usually, you know, we have small business owners, let's say you might know some of these people, we have small business owners who transition, right, from working in a corporate office, working in a traditional office, and they start their own business. And most businesses and most business owners still believe and apply traditional era thinking to internet era advertising. So most small businesses, especially, they still believe and apply traditional era thinking to internet era advertising. And this is why we see so many businesses, so many small businesses fail online. They start a business, you know, they're, they're very enthusiastic, but they fail online because they still apply to traditional thinking to the current age, which doesn't really work anymore. Okay, um, going over the, the comments here. It, has, it still works nowadays, uh, more creative. Trust is very important in online business, right? That's very true. Trust is extremely important. You have to build that trust when it comes to an online business compared to traditional, especially if you don't, like, tr traditional businesses, if they have a physical store, you can say, you know, this company is legit. But with online business, you know, it's so easy to put up a website, right? It's so easy to create a website. Um, some businesses don't even have websites, right? They have like just Facebook pages. So it's even harder to trust these businesses. A website is good to build credibility, but it's still easy to build a website. Um, so you have to build the know, like, and trust factors. Okay? Those three factors if you want to succeed online. Okay, so um, now... Let me know if you have any questions. Let me, let me, let me know if you have um, questions or comments regarding this. And let me go to... Oh, hey, Jackie. Jackie is my classmate in elementary. Let me go back to Bambi Luzano's question here. Which is the best that you can recommend in advertising? Most people do not read. Many thanks. So... People still read, right? People still read, but they don't read a lot, right? They don't read a lot. They don't, they, you can't expect, well, it depends on, number one, it depends on your target market, right? And for you to understand your target market, what kind of language do they use? What kind of words do they use? What kind of words will capture their attention? You want to speak the language that your target market speaks, but when it comes to your come here, most people do not read. So I'm assuming that you're the target market, that you're the market that you're targeting, is somebody who just scrolls through, and you have le even less than a second sometimes to capture their attention, to capture their attention. So what you have to do is you have to have something that once again captures their attention, and number one captures their attention, and number two holds their interest. So. Number one, capturing their attention. So um, if, you, if you're selling, for example, if you're selling clothes, right? You want to have a picture that's not too refined and, but not, but is still able to show the, the aesthetics of the product that you're selling, right? And you want to have it to be in such a way that it captures the attention of the, the, the possible buyers. 
and then in the in the content in the text you want to hold their interest so if people if you're able to capture people's attention then they will start to start to read then they will start to read and they'll continue reading if you keep their attention going if you lose their attention midway in your copy in your text then they're going to move on but you capture the attention and then you hold their interest with the text that you're writing i hope that was um that helped you but if, if you if you can share like what product or service you're referring to then um, i'd be able to kind of give a more specific answer there okay um just looking here all right so um we talked about a number of things today in today's session right we talked about traditional advertising we talked about internet advertising and the difference in approaches between the two okay the difference in approaches between the two so i want i want you guys to share something i want you to share something this time i've been sharing for almost an hour now so i want you to share in the comments down below what was the most important piece of information that you will remember from today's session especially if you are a small business owner or if you're serving small business owners in the marketing field what's the piece of information that you will remember that will stick in your head okay. and I, uh, the reason i'm asking you this is because there's a big chance that after the session maybe you'll say oh that's interesting that's nice i learned something but in the coming days you're going to forget it okay. but if i if you're going to comment it down below it's something that sticks in your head especially if it's just one piece of information one piece of information that you think in your situation would make the biggest impact okay, so i'm gonna wait for your comments down there let me know in the comments section what's the most important piece of information that you will remember from today's session let me just open these here What's the most important for you? What do you think the most important piece of information is? Can't see the comments there. Okay, um, up here. No like and trust. Thank you, thank you, Mail. No like and trust. Um, very important. Different strokes to different folks. So speak the client's language that's also a very important point trust you want to build trust capture catch their attention um, and hold their interest okay build trust for your target market quality over quantity right the, the targeting um, I just tuned in Ivy okay so you don't have a takeaway yet but there will be a replay after this so don't worry don't worry if you just tuned in okay so um, thank you for commenting that and if you're watching the replay I still want you to comment in the comment section what's the most important piece of information that you will remember from today's session and for those that typed in you know be sure that you keep that in mind like those these specific things that you're mentioning you keep these in mind all right um, now just reminding everybody once again if you want to get more in depth you know, we, today we talked about the differences between traditional and internet advertising and the approaches that you should take so you know and the approaches that most businesses don't take and that's why they fail when it comes to internet advertising and then approaches that you should take so that you can succeed in internet advertising so um, if you want to get more in depth to the specific how to's how to set up campaigns how to target audiences how to create systems that work we do have the master class that i'll be conducting it's talking about facebook ads talking about bots and it includes three months of consultations in this master master class when it comes to um, internet advertising and so it's it's four live sessions i may be doing more than four live sessions and three months which includes three months of ad consultations three months of ad consultations um right now it's twenty thousand it's it's the first batch so we're offering it at a lower rate of twenty thousand if you're doing a one-time payment or seven thousand five hundred if for three monthly installments and it comes once again with a 30-day money back guarantee okay 30-day money back guarantee if you're not sure if you're not sure about this you know if you're not sure whether this is right for you um what i'd recommend is you schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me um, over at jason.ph slash call once again it's a 15-minute call and if you are 
um, if you do want to get the PDF slides um, to this presentation and uh, want, to, want to have just a 15-minute consultation, just head over to json.ph slash call. Okay, json.ph slash call. Um, one of the requirements is that you share this webinar, okay, that you share this webinar and head over to that page to get the instructions so that you can get your free consultation call and the PDF slides of this presentation. All right. Okay, uh, let me see if we have... Oh. Oh, well, before I go over the last comments, I, I want to leave um, kind of a reminder for all of you. You know, this era, this era right now, the internet era, no, not, not the coronavirus era because we're going to get past that. I know that we're going to get past that. It may take a few weeks. It may take a couple of months, but we're going to get past that and we're going to be able to recover, right? But this era right now, it's the easiest time to start a business. With the right knowledge, it's very possible to grow a business from a 10,000 peso budget to earning a million in a year. And that's very possible with the facilities and with the opportunities that are available right now. Okay, so um, I'll leave the URL here, jason.ph slash call. If you want to get that 15 minute consultation call and the PDF slides to this as well. Okay, um, just tuned in, apply traditional era thinking to internet era ads. Nice job. So kind of mixing the two. Um, Lynn, small businesses have a fighting chance with online advertising. Um, Mary Claire, more specific people, the better. I will as soon as I watch the full video. It again to trust, building trust is someone who, as someone has pointed out um, in the comments already, is key critical when it comes to internet advertising. This struck me the most. Nice. Um, trust and be eclectic. Being eclectic. Being a bit weird in a sense, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any other questions tonight. Once again, if you want to get that 15-minute um, call and the PDF slides, just head over to jason.ph slash call. Um, you'll see the requirements there. Let me just test to see if that's working right now. Oh, yep, yeah, it is working. So head over there. Um, you'll get the requirements. And um, have a great evening. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope you learned something that's useful for you tonight. Thank you for spending time with me tonight. And have a great weekend, okay? Um, spend time with your family. Please don't go out. Please don't go on vacation, you know? Um, find ways to still enjoy um, without without uh, while well, being socially distant from other people so that we can we can you know so that we can get through this together faster okay so that we can get